We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Kate and Abby Show. Today, we're talking about one of my favorite topics, and that is minimalist writing methods. Minimalist writing methods for writing a novel or any other creative writing project you might have in the works. Have you ever felt completely overwhelmed by your own process? Like there's just too many things happening. There's too much on the table. You either have way too many steps in your planning process or maybe way too many steps in your actual writing process. And you're just like, where do I go from here? How did I get so bogged down with so many things to think about? This isn't even fun anymore. So we're going to delve into that. If that's you, we've been there too. And we have come up with some different methods that we've used in our own writing journeys that have helped us a lot. Our aunt's sign was a little bit off place. Sorry for the interruption. Have to center that and Yes. But so like, what are your thoughts on this? Well, first, before we get started, we have to thank our sponsors, who are you guys. You guys support this show and keep it going, and we are so appreciative of your support. So if you get value out of this podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep this show alive and free of interruptions. So let's dive in. Um, so my thoughts on, on minimalist writing methods and approaches, I think a lot, there's a lot to be said for this because obviously I am... If you follow my channel, <laughs> any of you guys follow my channel, you know that I, I tend to get a little bit extra when it comes to like outlining and planning. Um, I firmly believe that every writer needs to find their own process and you find your process through experience, really, through time and practice of doing the thing so many times that it just becomes a part of you and then you start to realize, oh, this is my this is my process. This is what works for me. So I, from the outside, it seems like I am very complicated with my process, but actually for me, it feels simple because I'm not, tr I'm not like grasping at all of these various things, trying to make them all work for me. I know it works for me. And so I know exactly where to go. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like if you get some recipe like really ingrained in your memory that it seems like as you're watching somebody make this this uh dish and they're making this recipe and they're putting all these ingredients together it seems like oh wow that looks kind of complicated from the outside but it's like so ingrained in their memory that they know exactly how to do it they can like, right. do it in their sleep that's kind of how i see the writing process is it's like once you get your process it's actually quite simple and you don't have to overcomplicate it. Even if you hear from other people like, oh, this is, you should do this and you should do that and you should, you know, add these other things into your process. Well, not necessarily, not right. if it doesn't work for you, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I think that's part of the beauty of using minimalist techniques is it's not like it's its own technique in and of itself. It's something that it's more like a tool that can be applied to whatever your technique already is. So whatever type of process you have, you can invite more minimalist methods of like simplifying that into your current process. It's not like, oh, you know, adapt someone to someone else's process. Right. It's more like, how can you take your current process and fine tune it so it works better for you? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that might have served you at one time but are no longer serving you that you can let go of? Yeah. What are some ways that we can condense, okay, here's three steps, but really we could make that one concise step. So I think that's the beauty of it is whether you're a plotter or a pantser, however you, um, whatever you like to call the way you write, maybe not even either one of those things, however you like to write, you can invite more minimalist ways of doing that thing into your life. 
especially if you're starting to feel overwhelmed or this works great for creative burnout. Yeah. A lot of times we get burnt out creatively because we're we're stacking too many things on top of our process. We're actually overcomplicating something that's very, very simple, which is just the simple act of sitting down to write. So I think that's where some of these methods can come in handy. Yeah. And it's exciting at first to do the complicated thing. At least it is for me. You know, it's like... um it's like when you you return home after like a long trip and you realize that your house is a mess and you're like, I'm going to clean everything. Yeah. Like we're going to do <laughs> yes. top to bottom, the whole house, every closet, every drawer. We're going to just clean it all out, major spring cleaning. And it's like exciting. The thought of that is like really exhilarating for like two hours. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then it quickly turns into huge overwhelm. Right. And it's not an efficient way to tackle a big project. Right. And writing a story, any kind of story for any with any format, whether it's a novel, screenplay, a web comic, all of that is a big project that you're taking on. So breaking it down into t- smaller steps, but also simplifying your process and um, asking yourself, like, what do I really need to focus on here? That is what is going to make your process more efficient and more enjoyable because nobody enjoys being just totally overwhelmed by the whole idea. (laughs) Right. So practically speaking, then let's delve into how we do those things. Yeah. So for me, it looks like not having tons and tons of notes and extra things. I try to have as few extra things as humanly possible. I have all the all the notes that I ever jot down, and I put jot down in air quotes if you're watching this, or if you're listening to it, that's what I'm doing, is I say it that way because I don't like write down a lot of notes. I try to keep them all in one spot, and I do it online. I don't actually jot them down on paper because jotting things down on paper in multiple notebooks or sticky notes all over the place. I used to have sticky notes all around my desk, (laughs) everywhere. And um, they would just say, you know, simple things like, oh, remember to add this. Remember to go back and edit this, especially in the editing stages, which already editing can get quite overwhelming. And then when you have like 20 sticky notes all around you and they're like, did I even do that? Or was I still supposed to do that? You know, it's like, don't do that. Have all your notes in one concise place. And I use Evernote, uh, the free version of the Evernote. It's um, an online app that's basically like, a, it's kind of like Google Docs, but it allows me to keep everything in one place online so I can access it from any computer I happen to be working on that day. And as things get accomplished, I can just easily delete them rather than having notes laying around that I'm like, did I do this? Did I do that? Um, I'm not sure. Multiple notebooks, multiple lists. It decreases the clutter in your brain. <laughs> it decreases the clutter in your actual space. And I think you you have more handwritten notes, but you seem very organized and pretty minimal with how you do that. Yeah. Well, part of what I do is when I want to write in a notebook, because I do write down quite a few ideas in notebooks. Um, but when I do that, I always type it up afterwards. And I try to keep it within like a within close range of, okay, I wrote this down. And I'm like, tomorrow, I'm going to sit down and type up my notes and like organize them in Scrivener. Because if I don't, then I'll just like forget about them. <laughs> I'll forget about them in that notebook somewhere. And I probably won't, they probably won't make it into my outline or whatever I'm working on. So that's one way that I do it. I also like to write notes in Scrivener. First, I write it like, I write all my ideas in kind of a messy way um, with a document I call my brain dump. And it's just like whatever comes to me, stream of consciousness ideas. And a lot of times it's a total mess, just like huge blocks of text with like notes to myself and and all kinds of craziness. Um, But that is something that when I go to write my outline, I will oftentimes copy and paste pieces of that into my outline. But like you were saying, you have to keep track of, well, did I already do this? Did I already write this in? Did I, you know, what? what's the stage of this? Right. For that, I, I like to keep my notes still in my brain dump. But what I do is I, 
highlight the chunk of text that I already that I know I've used or I know I've put in the outline and I make the text like a light gray color so it's like grayed over I already did this this is done you don't need to look at it and then that just leaves kind of highlighted now my notes that I haven't incorporated into the outline yet right so that's another way that I like to organize it but I try to keep even my outlining at this stage has become more minimal in that I don't always fill out all my character profiles. I don't always fill out scene cards. I, in fact, I rarely do scene cards at this point in my writing process. I still think scene cards are very helpful, but only if you feel you need them. So I think a lot of the minimalist writing approach has to do with um, trusting your intuition as a as a creative and trusting like, do I really need this or am I just kind of over preparing to the point of procrastination and putting myself in like a creative paralysis, you know? Right. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. And the thing is, in my opinion, in almost every case, you can replace the word minimalism with intentionalism Mm. because it's about being intentional with your time, your resources, your craft, whatever, whatever it is. Um, it's about having an intentional method. So like you were saying, even though you're pro- you have a bit of a process with how you take notes and a lot of our listeners have a more um, intense process with taking notes than I do, then there are other people who barely take notes like me. But it doesn't matter how like what your process is as long as you're being intentional with it. I think where things get overwhelming is when we're doing things completely mindlessly. There's no intention to it. It's just like, oh, we're kind of just like trying to keep our heads above water here, writing things down as we go with no real rhyme or reason or method. And that's often where we end up spiraling into what am I even doing? I feel disorganized. I feel cluttered mentally, perhaps even physically. So if we can apply intentionalism to our process, even if we have a bit of a like, okay, you know, I I like to use these notebooks. I like to also then, you know, transcribe that into this Scrivener project, et cetera, et cetera. You can still be so intentional and precise with how you're doing that, that that's your method. There it is. And you save a ton of time because you know that that's what you're going to do. You're intentional about it. You're intentional with your time. And that translates into more time and more space to be creative and far less clutter mentally. Yeah. I think another thing that contributes to that feeling of being in flow, being creative, even in the outlining process, because I mean, that's like one of the one of the most creative processes for me, well, creative stages of the process, I should say, is the outlining process. And I think a, a good way to find that simple flow of creativity is to follow, like I was saying, follow your intuition or um, like chase the butterflies of creativity, mm. so to speak. Um, I love that. And that that's, I love that. <laughs> that's something that you can kind of like, at least when I'm, when I'm outlining or writing, I can like feel that. Like I have an idea for a character and maybe something about their personality or their relationships with another character. Oh, but I'm working on, uh, you know, outlining act two. I can't go do that right now. I have to focus on act two. And then I'm like focused on that. That's to me, you are now like stunting your creativity Mm -hmm. by doing that and not chasing that butterfly (laughs) of just being like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to hop over into their character profile and write down like, you know, the ideas I had about their character and their relationship with their family, whatever the case may be. And following those little bursts of creativity are what I find in the long term keep you excited about your story and motivated to write and also help to like uh, build the story in a more intentional way that ends up being better in the end than if you were like forcing yourself to stay organized and work on this one thing, you know, step one, step two, step three. That's not always the best process, you know, and and sometimes it's more erratic and all over the place and that's okay. (laughs) And even if it's not 
Um, it doesn't have to be like, you know, a bunch of, a uh, bunch of tasks that you're giving yourself to do that you have to complete all of this, all this outlining, all this preparation. It can be still really simple, but I think following those bursts of creativity are, it, that's one of the most important things. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think that's, again, staying intentional. What's your intention? What's your intention with your craft? And really get that down to something concise and simple, something that you can connect with. And most likely it's that you love writing, you love telling stories, you love being creative, you love feeling inspired and then taking that story and sharing it. Yeah. So if if that happens to be like, okay, wow, I feel really inspired to write this today instead of that, then you should go for it. You should do that. <laughs> you should do that thing. Unless you're, you know, on in the rare event that perhaps you're on a deadline for something that absolutely has to be finished. But come on. I mean, that's the rare event. Yeah. Most of the time, you probably are able to swap back and forth. Or maybe it's trying something new. You know, maybe you're not used to working on more than one thing at a time. And so... It's like, oh, I don't know if I can do that, <laughs> pointing to myself here. <laughs> but, you know, branch out, try new things. Be simple and minimal with what your intention is, because really, it is simple. It is simple. You're doing this so that you can express yourself creatively. So allow that to take shape how it may. You said something really fascinating and true earlier, which was kind of something like your process, um, stacking too many things on top of each other can become procrastination. Mm, yeah. And that's so true. And I think that is something I've dealt with personally is the actual writing process itself, sitting down to write every day and how many things you're stacking on top of, actually bringing that process about. Like, how many things do you have to do before you actually write a word? Like, okay, you know, maybe it's you check your email, then you open Pinterest, then you have to find the perfect soundtrack. Oh, I don't know if I'm feeling this one. Let me find a different one. Maybe if I looked at Pinterest, oh, look, here's a YouTube video. If I'm, I'm just going to watch this for a minute. Then a half hour goes by and it's like, oh, well, now I'm hungry. Now I need a snack. Now I need a coffee. Now I have to go to the bathroom. Now I have to look at Pinterest. It's like a never ending thing. Okay. So... And I laugh because I think, you know, I think a lot of writers can relate to that. I've seen memes to the effect. So stacking too many things on top of each other. Yeah. Too many things to inspire you. So really get intentional about what so actually you end up being really you. uninspired. <laughs> right. And then you end up being not, not inspired at all. You're like, uh, I, my brain feels too cluttered now. And now yeah. for me, I write first thing in the morning when I write typically. And that's because there hasn't been any type of mental clutter to enter my brain yet. Now, sometimes I will use certain tools like watching specific things on YouTube or um, a certain soundtrack or something that will inspire me to get into the mood of what I'm writing. So maybe if I'm writing fantasy, I want to like, you know, watch like a clip from a fantasy movie I really love. And that gets me in this like fantasy mindset. Maybe I want to listen to a score that's like, oh, I love this score. This inspires me so much. Or I have a Pinterest board that I open and I look at the images. And when I want to like have that visual, I return to it. But be intentional with what those things are. Yeah, Don't those just are all like very... Um I can tell when you're saying that it's like all very specific things mm -hmm. that you like kind of more or less planned out ahead of time. Exactly. You know, not like, oh, I'm just going to browse YouTube for a while and maybe I'll see something that inspires me or I'm just going to scroll through Pinterest and, you know, maybe I'll see, maybe I'll build some aesthetic boards that inspire me. And, uh, you know, with the soundtrack, you right. probably already have soundtracks in mind that yes. you know you love that get you in that mood. So it's not, um, it's not aimless. Exactly. None of it's aimless. That's a great All way of it to has it. like a point, mm -hmm. has an end, like like destination. Exactly. <laughs> that you're going to aimless is a great way to put it because when you don't have a method, a plan, something that you've intentionally chosen to do, that's what it becomes. It's just aimlessly browsing the internet, browsing YouTube like looking up things on Pinterest and suddenly you're like reading directions for how to build your own backyard birdhouse <laughs> instead of like, oh, this started as, you know, looking at my writing Pinterest board. So just be intentional with how you do it. You can use tools like that and they can be helpful. They help me, but you have to be intentional with 
what you are selecting and inviting into your creative process. Yeah. And same with like um, setting up things like your Scrivener, <laughs> you know, right. like I did a video a couple of weeks ago or maybe a m- couple months ago now about um, making your Scrivener more aesthetic. And that was a fun video. And I do use the tools within Scrivener to make it look aesthetic and to put myself in the writing mood. But a lot of the things that I showed in that video are not typical things that I do like on, on every given writing day. Like th- those are things I do like very occasionally. And a lot of times I'll save something as a theme and then I'll go back and use the theme again and again. But as far as like making, um, oh, I have to make this look just right. Like usually if you're in the in the zone and you're writing and you're inspired, you don't need that much really to fuel you as far as like visuals go, you know, maybe a couple of like uh, concept images or the right, for me, it's like the right theme as far as um like colors in the background. Sometimes right. that can really throw me off if it's like not the right color but it doesn't have to be like oh it has to be this exact shade (laughs) this exact color hex it doesn't have to be that it (laughs) has to be like okay this has to be like dark dark mode or light mode um a lot of times i write in dark mode so things like that um sometimes that can inspire me and otherwise really throw me off if it's not just right Mm -hmm. but a lot of times it's not complicated. Yeah, I can see you know, where it's it'd very be hard simple. if you're writing like, you know, a spy heist scene and your background is like Victorian wallpaper. Yes, exactly. Because like, my, my background, not in the mood <laughs> my background on here. my laptop right now is like this cottagecore collage thing. Oh, okay. So yeah, it hasn't really been a great background for the for, <laughs> for our book that we're writing. That's but awesome. um, yeah, it's, it's funny. So I change things like that sometimes because it's like, okay, I just need this one thing very simple again very minimal just change this one thing it changes your whole mood but you don't have to you know go to great lengths to make it this big complicated process right and if you want your scrivener to look really great and aesthetically pleasing but you don't want to have to do all that work you want to keep it minimal abby made presets yes so we'll link those below (laughs) that's cool because you can just load them in and there it is exactly you have a bunch of different moods and you can pick and choose there but Yeah, that's the thing is keeping it simple, Mm -hmm. figuring out, okay, what are the few things that actually inspire me? Or am I just doing these things because I've always done them? A lot of times things bump into us and then they end up staying, you know, they become a habit and it wasn't even something we invited into our lives or our practices. Mm. Yeah. And, And sometimes I think the getting ready to do something can just be like a form of avoiding doing the actual thing yes. <laughs> or like not because you want to avoid it but because you're like kind of intimidated by it yeah. or like afraid that you're not going to have a good writing day so you're like well I have to do all these things first and then o- then and only then I can write but actually you're just kind of intimidating yourself into thinking that if you don't do those things you won't have a good writing day or you think you're already predisposed to not have a good writing day which is just nonsense don't believe that self-doubt in your head and we have a ton of podcasts about self-doubt if you have if you're dealing with that so go check out those podcasts and the best way to overcome that fear in the back of your mind is to just start writing yeah start writing and even you know i dare say before you even start all your other process if, if that's you if you're listening to this and you're like yeah man i definitely feel intimidated and that's what's fueling this process that i have to get ready Write a few lines first, then do your process. Get ready after that. When you first sit down at your computer, just write out a few sentences, write like a paragraph. That. Just just write that first sentence. So now you're sitting now you can get ready. Go get ready to write. But now you're sitting down to something that's already begun. Yeah. It's not a blank page. And it's and, and you've already gotten yourself over that fear of writing those first words that's already done already taken care of so now those same triggers aren't happening in your mind where as you're going through your process you're just becoming slightly you know subtly in the back of your mind intimidated yeah and it feels like farther and farther away like the Mm -hmm. the little cartoon door shrinking farther away from you whereas if you already started writing like you said then you're kind of like you're doing your process or getting ready but you're like already writing exactly you know? yeah <laughs> mentally you're like i'm already writing i'm writing right now right so it's not like oh i'm getting distracted what else is there to get distracted <laughs> exactly <laughs> right? yeah. like you're busy 
your writing. Exactly. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. That's really cool. It creates a good mental pattern mm. that I think could be helpful. Yeah. For sure. Mm. But I think there's a lot to be said for keeping your entire process simple. It helps you accomplish more. It's help, it helps you go farther. It helps you find your footing better and push aside things that might actually be inhibiting your growth creatively. Yeah. Things that you really don't need, things that maybe you're not even sure why you still do them. And I think it's important to remember as you continue to grow as an artist, things that served you a couple years ago might not serve you now. Things that serve you now might not be helpful anymore a couple years from now. And that's the beauty of it is it's constantly evolving. It's constantly growing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, Which you're, is a good sign or else you wouldn't be improving as a writer. Exactly. So that's a sign of improvement and a sign of growth. And I think that's another thing about the process. I've, I've experienced that with my own process and how much it's changed. And just observing that, and being okay with like letting go of the control over every aspect of it, that's like been my personal uh, journey because I, as you know, I'm very like uh, super organized kind of type A <laughs> that like I'm very, you know, uh, regimented about certain things being done a certain way. But I'm starting to see that, you know, with experience and time, you don't have to you don't have to do it the same way that you've always done it. You know, you're going to grow and you're going to become uh, more experienced and better at what you do. And those things will come natural to you because they become a part of you after a while. And even if you haven't been writing for a long time, I think some people, some writers can end up overwhelming themselves with the process and the idea of, you know, outlining and planning everything and building characters and building the world, the whole the whole, uh, everything that's involved in, in writing a story. And they end up just overthinking it. Like I get a lot of questions that are very specific and very, um, like overwhelmed. (laughs) And I can just tell that the writer is overwhelmed by overthinking things. And my advice usually to the point of, um, you know, I, I try to give advice on whatever the context of the question is, but beyond that, my advice is usually you're overthinking it. Just like relax, take a deep breath and just write it. And you'll be surprised by how much you don't need to even think about it. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Like we recently experienced that with um, the current project we're writing when I was like, oh, you know, that's that chapter a couple chapters ago when like we talked about so much. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. We can't figure out this problem. I'm not sure what to do here and whatever, whatever. We talked about it for like hours late into the night, early the next morning. (laughs) And finally, I'm just like, you know what? I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to sit down and write it. And everything was fine. Yeah, it was like, and it's like your, I was almost your, your creativity knew what to do before your brain right. Did. Exactly, <laughs> it's like almost this creative muscle memory. Yeah, that we were exhausting ourselves trying to figure out what this certain plot point was doing, but it just needed to be written and not talked about. Yeah, to that extent, I actually did that with the last chapter I wrote too. Wow, really? Yeah, because I started writing it and I'm like, uh, this is going to be a little bit different because a few things changed in the outline. And I'm like, should I outline it first? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to outline it first. I'm just going to write it. And I went off of some of the ideas that I still had previously, but I ended up just writing it and it ended up being great. That's so I'm awesome. Like, this is cool. You know, I just kind of like, I can wing it. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's okay. There's a lot to be said yeah. for that. Trust your creativity. But it is a it is a mental muscle or it is a muscle memory like you said yeah exactly but i think we've shared a lot of good info about different ways you can incorporate this into your life into your writing life keeping it simple simplifying your notes simplifying your planning process and simplifying your actual writing process yeah do it you'll be glad you did for Thanks sure. for listening to this episode. Share it with a friend and follow us. Like it. Smash the like button. Do all that great stuff. Thank you again for our amazing sponsors. And until next time, stay stoked and rock on. Stay stoked.